Once I started using Adobe XD for my Instagram carousels, it really sped up my workflow and also made it easier for me to add my own branding and keep everything really cohesive. And since I've been doing it this way for over a year now, I thought it'd be fun to take you through the process and show you with a real example that's gonna go up on my Instagram page. Okay, so the first thing I do when I go to create a new post is I will open up this file um, that I have with like ongoing posts. And so usually I'll make a new one every couple months when this gets really filled up, but I like to have sort of a backlog of what I've created so that I can steal elements. Like maybe I want to steal like this shape or um, you know, just different things like that. It just makes my workflow quicker if I'm able to build off of posts I've already created. So anyway, now that we're sort of at the end of May, I have tons and tons of stuff to pull from. Um, and so what I will do is just go ahead and create a brand new artboard. So just kind of duplicating the size that I already have, 1080 by 1080, and gonna change the background color. And so this will sort of be my title slide. Um, so I'm just going to label that, because um, the first step here is to kind of give myself an outline, right? So I want to create however many artboards I'm going to need and jot down a little note just in like an ugly font. It doesn't matter what, you know, what it looks like yet. Jot down what I'm gonna have on that screen um, so that I kind of know what uh, assets I need to create, if I need to design some things, if I need to go take any photos, um, take screenshots, things like that. And so I've kind of already done that actually. So I'm just going to pull up what I've already created. And of course, as you know, Instagram only lets you do 10 slides per carousel. So for this post I'm making, it's like a mini tutorial of how to go from an animation in XD to a GIF. I have all my brand colors and fonts over here in the document assets which makes my life so much easier. So what you can do is actually create a library. And so I do that with my um, branding and stuff like that. So what you can do is choose a library or if you just want to have um, a color palette and assets for one document, then you can do that too. And so now what I'm going to do is pull in the screenshots that I took for this post. So since it's a tutorial post, I took a bunch of screenshots of the process that I use to do like this method that I'm teaching about. So now what you're gonna see me do is a really rough um, version of what this post will look like. I'm gonna put all these screenshots in here, draft up what the text is gonna say, and then I'll come back and we'll figure out how to make it flow really nicely and actually look nice and branded. Okay, so now I have the rough one done and I have not done the title slide yet. I always save this for last because um, it just takes a lot of like actual designing whereas everything else um, is a little bit quicker. So we're going to do that last, but now what I wanna do is try to find a way to make these flow into each other better. As it is now, they're a little bit chunky um, and like when you would swipe left to right, it just wouldn't look all that nice. So one way to make these look a little bit more streamlined and less like chunky and color blocked 
is to play around with background color. So for this one, let's give the whole artboard this background color. And then to make these kind of blend in, we're gonna give it an, a multiply blend mode. And then we're just going to kind of mess around with this until it looks nice. Let's see. There we go. So that looks a bit better. And then I'm just going to center this a bit more. And so now, as you can see, it just looks more streamlined. Like it looks like it's kind of all one background color, which is really nice. For this one, let's go with the entire background being this lighter color. So to do that, I'm gonna kind of cut out this um, window, kind of like this. I'm just doing Command Shift M to mask it. And then I'm gonna double click in and give these some rounded corners. Um, and then to give it a shadow, I'm going to actually kind of duplicate that, put it in the background and give that a shadow. We'll do a 20 pixel blur and then we'll group that together and bring it back up here. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm just going to balance out the text a bit more and okay i like that and now what we're seeing here is that there's kind of a stark difference between this light background and dark background and in order to make that flow nice i'm going to get one of these blob shapes and bring it in here and i'm going to make it the same color as this background and then i'm just going to put it onto this artboard and just give us sort of like an overlap so that we can still see all the content on here that's like really important but it's going to let these pages kind of flow into each other see how that looks a little bit better than before it looks a little bit more seamless and we're not getting rid of any information here that is really important so now i'm just going to do that on all of these i'm going to see if i can get one solid background color to be the main background color um, for each one and then I'll be able to get something to sort of transition between them. Okay, so as you can see, I chose one basic color for each slide depending on what images were on there and then sort of worked around that and if the color was changing from slide to slide, I gave it this little wobbly shape um, to make it more intentional and to make them flow together more. And so now all I have left to do is the title. And so I wanted to show you guys um, how I determine what kind of title slide I'm going to use because I actually alternate between like a full bleed photo and a colored background with like text or sometimes image on top. So as you can see here, the last one that I did was a full bleed photo. So now I have to do a background. And so that's why I'm doing this solid background. And along with that, I also alternate between this like mauve color, um, a cream color, and this like, um, I guess peachy color, and the super light blue. This time around, I haven't done like the mauve in a while. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for this. And that's also why I have brought that color into all the other slides with this like background button. So, now I have to sort of figure out exactly what the text is going to be on here 
and figure out what the best way to introduce it is. So you can see for this one, it was a guide to layering text on image. So I layered text on image. And so I basically do that for all of them. Like I want to make sure that it's a really enticing title page um, or title slide. So that's what I'm gonna figure out here and I'll let you know what I come up with. So as you're about to see here, I actually had a really hard time with this one. It took me a minute to figure out exactly how I wanted to word everything. And mostly I was having a hard time figuring out what the visual focus should be of this title slide. At first, I kind of thought that I wanted the focus to be this like GIF cat, you know, that everyone knows and thinks of when they think of a GIF. Um, but ultimately I realized that I actually needed something animated on the slide, like duh. <laughs> and so once I figured that out, then it really all came together. So as you can see, I realized that I wanted to keep the title itself really simple. I had the cat really small just as a cute little addition. I also wanted to put the XD logo in there to make sure that it was clear. That was sort of what I was using. Um, that was sort of the starting point. You start with an animation in XD and you get a GIF out of this method. And so then I actually added an animated tab bar to the top of this. And I think that really brought it together um, and it showed showed what I was teaching in the rest of the post. So even though it took a few tries, I ultimately am really happy with how this turned out. And you can of course look at it over on my Instagram too now. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you did like this one in particular, I have a lot of other videos with Adobe XD. Most of them are included in my tutorial playlist, which is linked down below. So check that out and I will see you guys in a future video. Bye.